Well, guys, it's a day everybody saw coming. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're lost on what the title of this video is referring to, well, then, partner, I'm sorry, but I'm about to ruin your day. And I'm really not joking. That's right, boys and girls, as I'm sure many of you already know at this point, the absolutely disgusting, vile woman known as Ruby Frank has finally been arrested. Now, if you're not familiar with the name Ruby Frank, she is the creator of the YouTube family channel, Eight Passengers. If you're not familiar, with the YouTube family channel 8 Passengers, well, then you better put on your big boy pants and strap on in because you're about to be introduced to one of, if not the worst thing on YouTube. Well, not anymore because they were banned, but 8 Passengers was a YouTube family channel run by the couple Ruby Frank and Kevin Frank. Now, Ruby and Kevin have been the topic of debate for quite some time at this point because of their uh, unorthodox parenting methods. And by unorthodox parenting methods, I mean what is essentially just child abuse. Now, if you genuinely know nothing about Eight Passengers, don't worry, I'm gonna get into more of what they've done here in a minute. Now, why Eight Passengers are relevant right now and why I'm making this video is because about a week ago, Ruby and her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt, were arrested and charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. Due to this, this situation has blown up across the internet. It seems like everybody and their mother is talking about it. And since I've talked extensively about family channels in the past with you guys knowing that, uh, my opinion of them is not exactly a positive one, I wanted to talk about this situation as well. Now, why it's taken me a week to do so is because when I first heard about this situation in my head, it just didn't really seem like something to make a video on. Now, look, I'm not going to go into specifics here, but uh, I have an issue with some YouTubers on this website who see stories like this where it's not just your typical, quote, internet drama, it's real serious stuff, and all they see are dollar signs. There's a difference between talking about a situation, giving the information, adding context, and kind of helping a broader audience understand what's going on, and making a video titled Insane Family Channel Drama Gone Wrong Cops Called Eight Passengers Mother Arrested You Won't Believe Why. We saw this a few months ago or more than a few months ago at this point, I don't really remember what the quiet situation, if you don't know what that is, basically a very popular YouTuber was accused of some very, very serious stuff. And within literal hours, I'm not joking, dozens and dozens of commentary channels were making videos titled, Quiet is the most disgusting human ever. Another cringe YouTuber caught being a creep. And just stuff like that. And then about a month later, Quiet released a video explaining that literally every single thing said about him was a lie, and he proved every bit of it to be a lie. Look, I'm not trying to get preachy, I know we have a video to get to here, but I feel like there's this culture on the internet right now, where everything is downplayed and labeled as drama. I mean, I feel like the word drama is going down the same route as the word prank right now. It's losing all its meaning. And I just feel like when situations arise like this on the internet, and look, I'm not talking about like dumb YouTuber drama, but when situations happen like this, I feel like a lot of people are so quick to forget that they're talking about a real person. Like the other day, I saw a video on this situation and it was like your normal YouTube drama page thumbnail. And either in the title or the thumbnail, I can't remember, it was like, this is bad, dot, dot, dot. And like... Yeah, it's a woman who's being accused of severely abusing her children for years. I think it goes without saying that this is bad dot dot dot. Like this is not internet drama just because it has something to do with a woman who was on the internet. This is a woman who's committed a heinous crime. Like, can you imagine if any other media was like this? You turn on your local news and the news reporter comes on. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this, please make sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this situation because it is a crazy one. One. With that being said, though, let's get right into it. So today at 8.45 p.m., a local family of four was murdered. I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of crazy that a lot of the times it seems like people will cover these situations and forget that these people are real. There's real children, a real story here. But I'm going to stop ranting because I've been talking for way too long and I feel like I've made my point and I'm kind of just starting to repeat myself. And we're going to talk about what's actually going on here. So we're going to look at this New York Times article to start us off and kind of get a broad overview before we go into detail. I feel like it does 
does a pretty good job of giving us an outline of what's going on here. So it starts with a Utah mother who chronicled her strict parenting style on YouTube and other social media channels, was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse this week after one of her children climbed out of a window and ran to a nearby house seeking help. Ruby Frank, 41, was arrested on Wednesday in Ivins, a city in southern Utah, at the home of Jody Hildebrandt, her business partner, who was also arrested. Miss Frank hosted the now defunct YouTube channel 8 Passengers, where she posted videos about her parenting approach with her six children, including refusing them food as a form of punishment, with a hyperlink leading to this video. And my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean barbarian, but I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast. <laughs> until you get your chores done. If that doesn't kind of clue you into the kind of person this woman is, don't worry, there will be more. Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrandt were each charged on Friday with six counts of aggravated child abuse. According to an affidavit, Miss Frank's 12-year-old son, identified as RF in the document, climbed out a window at Miss Hildebrandt's home and went to a neighbor's home on Wednesday morning, asking for food and water. The child had duct tape on his ankles and wrist, as well as open wounds. He appeared to be emaciated and malnourished. The neighbor called the police, who then found Miss Frank 10-year-old daughter Eve at Miss Hildebrandt's. She also appeared to be malnourished, the affidavit said. Both children were taken to a hospital. The boy was placed on a medical hold due to his deep lacerations from being tied up with rope and from his malnourishment. Miss Frank was seen on a YouTube video filmed in Miss Hildebrandt's home that was posted two days ago, the affidavit said, adding that Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrandt, 54, had knowledge of the abuse, malnourishment, and neglect. A search of Miss Hildebrandt's home found evidence consistent with the markings found in the 12-year-old, the police said. The police contacted the Utah Division of Child and Family services and a total of four children were taken into its care. Both Miss Frank and Miss Hildebrandt were denied bail. There's another interesting article by the Rolling Stone titled Ruby Frank's Neighbors called the cops several times out of concern for the children and it makes some pretty insane claims. An Ivan's Utah resident who lives nearby the family tells Rolling Stone that he and other neighbors have called the police on Frank multiple times out of concern for the children. He notes there were weeks at a time where the children appeared to be left at home without an adult present. In early 2022 it started to get weird. People were concerned because Ruby completely stopped her YouTube stuff, and then it just kind of turned dark. She taped up paper over all of her windows, she would disappear for weeks at a time, and there's all these little kids just left alone in the house. The cops were called several times, they would come and they'd knock on the door, and nobody would open up. So it seems like some pretty insane and dark stuff was going on off camera, which is not exactly surprising, considering what these people were willing to put on camera. I can't go through it all because, I mean, there's been hundreds of things over the years that have been very questionable that this woman has done, but I'm going to go through some of the more notable things that really stand out as abusive behavior. There was a video where her daughter's teacher called her to tell her that her daughter did not have a lunch, and the teacher asked if she would be willing to bring her a lunch because this is a six-year-old child, and her response was that the kid is responsible for making her own lunch, and it's just the natural outcome that she's going to be hungry. She said, quote, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch because then she's not going to learn from it. She continued to say that it's her six-year-old daughter responsibility for making her own lunches in the morning, and then said, quote, my hope is that she'll be hungry and come home and go, oh man, that was really painful being hungry all day. Once again, this is a six-year-old kid. They sent their son to one of those insane wilderness rehabilitation camps. If you've never heard of them, basically they're these things for, quote, troubled teens, where they send you out into the wilderness and you basically live off the land for an extended period of time. You're treated like a dog, someone is watching you 24-7, people have restraints used on them, they're abused. It's very common for kids to come back from these things with PTSD. It's sort of like the idea of military basic training where you're torn down to be built up, except there's no period where you're built up. They'll send people to your house and you basically get kidnapped in the middle of the night and you wind up in one of these places. If you want to go down a rabbit hole, Google wilderness therapy. It's absolutely insane and these people sent their kid to one. When that same kid came back, they took away his bedroom for seven months because he told his brother they were going to Disneyland as a joke, and they made him sleep on a beanbag. Seven months. There's a video of her telling her, like, six-year-old daughter that they're gonna go to a movie, and the daughter asks, what movie is it? Like, any human ever of any age would. And because of this question, she no longer lets the kid go, because she should just be grateful someone's taking her to a movie. It's genuinely heartbreaking, because the kid's sitting there like, I'm really sorry, mommy, not understanding why her mom is a psychopath. She made her youngest daughter sleep on the bathroom 
bathroom floor because she wet the bed and didn't change the child's clothes. She took away Christmas from two of her children aged 8 and 10 because they weren't selfless enough and made them watch their siblings get Christmas presents while they got nothing. She removed all of the doors from the children's bedrooms and bathrooms so they have no privacy whatsoever. She's refused the kids meals if they don't do their chores. She seems to be very, very controlling about food. I think that's like her main thing she derives power from. So it makes a lot of sense that the kids were found malnourished. She has a lot of rules about food and frequently denies her children the ability to eat. And I mean, guys, I'm barely even scratching the surface here. There are so many things that this woman has done publicly and been proud of that there's no way I could talk about it all. And I mean, that's really the kicker here. Every single thing I've said so far was not like a hush-hush situation that came to light. Every single thing was in like one of their family vlogs in which she proudly talked about doing these things. If she was openly talking about doing this kind of stuff, what do you think was happening behind closed doors? I mean, it's just insane what these kids had to go through and it's unacceptable that it's taken this long for anything to happen. What's also unacceptable is that the dad has not been arrested yet. He's been out of the picture for a little bit now. I know they kind of unofficially split up. They weren't living together, but I know there's no way he didn't know what was going on. The most insane part of this entire story though is as the court hearings have been going on, the things that this woman has been saying about her children are unreal. She's basically been saying that this was all done for their own good because the two kids that were tied up have been assaulting the other siblings and kids in the neighborhood. Assaulting in more ways than one that I won't say because YouTube won't like it. Which apparently the kid started doing when he was only three years old. This is her actual defense. I hope this woman is swiftly convicted and spends the rest of her entire life rotting away in a jail cell. That might sound harsh, but I don't really care because I fully believe this woman has done everything she's been convicted of. It would be one thing if this was some random accusation out of the blue, but it's not. It's her own young children accusing her of doing this with her grown children who are now out of the house backing it up. Not to mention, you know, the years of her basically admitting to all of this on camera. I'm sure we'll see more and more come out about this situation as the weeks pass, but for now, that's really all that's public. If you want to learn more about this stuff, there's tons and tons of resources all over YouTube of people making compilations of the things this woman has done. I'm not going to include any videos of the actual kids because they don't deserve to keep having that displayed over and over and over again. But if for some reason you want to see it for yourself, you can just Google stuff like Ruby Frank not giving her kids lunch or Ruby Frank's son's sleeping bag. I mean, you can find all of this stuff very easily. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to talk about before we wrap up, and that's just kind of family channels as a whole on YouTube. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that Eight Passengers is the worst, I mean, at least hopefully. But if you're a person who supports family channels, you need to know that stuff like this is not necessarily uncommon. Tons and tons of family channels have been called out for abusive behavior, and even if they are great on paper, the idea and the structure behind a family channel is abusive in its own way. A child growing up without any sort of privacy whatsoever and having every single intimate moment filmed and put on the internet without any sort of say in the matter is abuse. Imagine every single little detail of your childhood being public information. Every embarrassing moment, every special day, every birthday, every friendship you made, every friend you lost, your bad days, your good days, every single thing put onto YouTube with a clickbait title and a thumbnail of you crying, exploiting your child hood for views. I mean, I think most people understand like on a base level that that's not a good idea and that's not cool, but I think a lot of people don't really think about it in depth. I mean, seriously, for a moment, try and put yourself in the shoes of these kids on these family channels. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos all over the internet just detailing every single thing about your life that you can never get rid of. You can never take it back. I mean, some of these kids are going to grow up and look back at the videos that they were put in and they're going to realize that they were nothing but an exception to their parents to make money. I honestly don't see how these channels are still allowed on YouTube. I mean, this is supposed to be a child-friendly site with child welfare in mind. Allowing family channels goes directly against that. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have been around children before, but if you watch these YouTube family channels and you pay attention to how the children behave, it's unusual. It's like a lot of them have been programmed. They always do exactly what the camera wants. It never seems like a genuine interaction. Does that necessarily mean they're being abused to achieve that result? No, but it's a possibility. I mean, I really just think this whole entire situation should be a wake-up call for the greater YouTube community. This family got away with this kind of stuff for this long, and they were basically open about it. Imagine what the other families are getting away with. I'm not trying to, like, launch some sort of conspiracy theory or something, but in my opinion, anybody who's willing
willing to exploit their child for views like every single family channel does is not right in the head, and there's something strange going on there. There just is. We do not need these channels on YouTube anymore. Well, guys, I know this was a bit more of a serious video for me than usual, but after really reading into the situation more, I just think there needs to be as much attention brought to this as possible. Not only for this case, but like I said, all of these other family channels, man. I've never seen a family channel ever that doesn't give off some sort of weird vibe. Like I said, I don't think you can be a good parent and a normal person if you're willing to trade your child's privacy and safety for YouTube revenue. There's something very off about the family channel category, and while this is a very unfortunate segue into a broader discussion about family channels as a whole, I think there needs to be one soon. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.